Hey everyone, what's up? What's good? Today's video, we are talking about how to budget and save money successfully. I love talking about all things money. I love talking about how to make money, how to save money, how to grow money, how to invest money. I love talking about money. Check books, cash app, direct deposit, any wire transfer. That's what I want to hear. And I thought it would be such a great idea to create a series called Mara Money where I just talk about all things personal finance and I really want to help everyone level up financially this 2021. We're going to come into 2021 better, smarter, richer, wiser, okay? So if you're interested in seeing more content on personal finance, please subscribe down below. And with all that being said, let's get into the video. Budgeting is the cornerstone of financial success. And I know starting off at first, budgeting can seem very overwhelming. Like, oh my gosh, I got all these expenses. I don't even know how I'm gonna cover them, right? But I wanna start off saying first and foremost that personal finance is called personal finance for a reason. And what your budget allows you to do is to have the freedom to decide what you want to spend your money on. The first step of budgeting is to look at how much money you're generating in income every month and then minus that by your expenses. So let's break that down a bit. You want to first look into your income. Do you have a salary job? Do you have an hourly job? Do you have a side hustle? Do you have anything that is generating money every single month? Yes, I did that. And you would do it too for a check. I was an employee and I was going to get an employee of the month and that's a period. And then you want to look at your expenses. This, <laughs> my friend, my friend, <laughs> let me tell you about this one. Because these expenses can just come up out of anywhere. There are levels to expenses, all right? There <laughs> are levels to expenses. And it took me a while to understand this because I think this is where budgeting can get very overwhelming for people and they just see the expenses and they say, no. Off that. I'm good, I'm good off that. Like, thank you, but no, right? But there's a way to categorize your expenses to make it a lot more understandable and easy for you. So there are three types of expenses. There are obligatory expenses, periodic expenses and variable expenses. Obligatory expenses are those that are mandatory. You must pay these in order to survive, right? So that is your rent, utilities, transportation, groceries, things of that nature. I would also maybe factor in debt repayment into that. The next thing you wanted to consider are periodic expenses. These are things that come up every so often periodically. So maybe on a semi-annual basis, you need to pay your car insurance or you have a subscription that is due every three months. You wanna factor that into your budget. The last thing that you wanna factor into your budget and probably the most exciting are the variable expenses. Variable expenses are things that can vary from month to month. So this is like eating out, apparel, entertainment. Variable expenses are not exactly essential, but uh, my variable expenses, and I'm sure a lot of other people's variable expenses bring them some joy. <laughs> So it is important to factor these things in. So once you've done your income and expenses and you know what that looks like, I think the next most important thing to do, I would actually even prioritize this, is to figure out how much money you are saving a month. Make a savings plan and commit to it. I cannot stress this enough. It is so important to have money saved for a rainy day. It is important to have an emergency fund. It is important to save money to pay off your debts if you have any. It is important to invest your money. But first and foremost, start building an emergency fund. There was a study done by the Federal Reserve and they found that 40% of Americans do not have enough money to cover a $400 emergency expense. Y'all, like let that just sit in. We're not judging anyone. This is no judgment zone, like Planet Fitness. But we're not judging no one, but 
just let us sink in because that's crazy and it is important that as we are building up our financial literacy that we understand the importance of saving money for emergencies and ideally your emergency fund should have three to six months of expenses worth just in case you may lose your job or things can happen and it's important to have that money aside knowing that if something were to happen you can go on carrying your life and supporting your lifestyle for a period of time until things can get a little better so once you figured out your income expenses and savings plan the next thing I would advise you to do is to start tracking your expenses and I believe that this is where a lot of people give up in budgeting. They're just like, yeah, that's that's a whole lot, Amar. I'm not sure if I want to do all that. You know what? I did say that. My bad. But we are very blessed. We are lucky that we live in a technological age where there is apps that can do this for us. So some of my personal favorites are YNAB and Pennies. I'm a big YNAB fan. I love YNAB. If you are a student, you can get YNAB free for a year. And if not, you can get YNAB free for the first 34 days. YNAB has changed the budgeting game for me. I love YNAB. YNAB is pretty similar to other budgeting apps like Mint. Mint is another really popular one. I personally don't use it, but I've heard a lot of great things about it. And the great thing about apps like YNAB and Mint is that they actually can link to your bank account and upload the transaction for you. All you have to do is categorize it and make sure that you are putting it in the right expense category. So this takes a lot of the pressure off. Another great app I would suggest to learn how to budget and track your money is Pennies. Pennies is what I first started off using in college and I loved it. It was really simple. The UI is clean, simple, easy to understand. And I think that's a great place to start when you are interested in learning how to budget your money. If none of these apps interest you, there are other methods. You can use the cash envelope method, which is where you set aside the money you will spend for each month and the categories you will spend it on and get envelopes. Say you have a grocery envelope, I'm gonna put in $150 every month for my grocery envelope and that's the money that you have allotted for groceries. So that's another very popular method. Another method you can do is a good old Excel sheets. I know people who love their Excel <laughs> budgeting sheets so that is also another option as well. Another thing you want to do to budget and save successfully is to review and adjust your budget periodically. You should be looking at your expenses over a six month period or a yearly period. You want to have a checkpoint. What I usually do is I'll do like every quarter, I'll do semi annually and I'll do annually and I'll kind of just sit down and look at my expenses and what I've been spending on and also my income, what am I saving and really see if I can make adjustments like mm, I'm spending a little bit too much money on eating out. Let me lower it a bit or I think I should spend a little bit more money in entertainment every month, right? That is the great thing about learning how to budget is that you get to decide what you want to spend your money on. So make sure that you are reviewing and adjusting your budget accordingly on a periodic basis. Something that I just recently learned about budgeting that is changing the game is sinking funds. And sinking funds are for those expenses that kind of just creep up on you, but you knew they were coming the entire year. Like you knew they were coming, like you knew the holidays were gonna come up. You knew you had to pay that car insurance in the next six months. You knew that person's birthday was coming up. And you just didn't want to take the responsibility, but now you're forced to. No, it's true. No, oh, it's true. This cross is a lie. Go ahead. No, this is real. Go ahead. And you're not necessarily sure where that money's coming from. So that is where the sinking fund helps you out. It basically allows you 
to plan your expenses in advance. So a great example of this are Christmas presents. So instead of waiting until the end of the year to figure out how I'm going to get my Christmas presents for people, I can say, hey, I'm going to set aside $50 a month every month of this year to make up for the Christmas presents that I will be spending on at the end of the year. And this allows you to be less stressed out about upcoming expenses and plan in advance and ensure that you are budgeting and saving the correct amount of money as you are planning out these future expenses. Budgeting gives you so much freedom and there is this misconception that once you start budgeting you have to restrict yourself to all the things that give you joy and happiness in your life, which is not true. Like I've said before, personal finance is personal and you get to decide exactly what you want to do with your own money. I love talking about money and personal finance. I'm going to create a series called Mara Money about different ways to build your financial literacy. And if you want to learn more about that, please subscribe to this channel. Comment down below what you've learned and if you'd want me to make any other content regarding personal finance. And don't forget to like this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.